this is the topic for today is IMS here. Yeah. These are the lessons of this. So, about talking about IMS here, yeah, this stands for integrated management of neonatal and childhood illness. So, it is an integrated approach to child health that focuses on the well being of the whole child and it aims to reduce death, illness, and disability and to promote improved growth and development among children under 5 years of age. It is being developed by WHO and UNICEF in 1992 and it targets children less than five years of age. The commitments include improving the case management skills of medical staff and the doctors and uh, paramedical staff, the medical officers that are present in primary health care system and improvement in health system. The second point and the third point is improvement in community and health practices by counseling them regarding vaccination and their nutritional status, etc. And if they present with a the disease, then uh, if we are discharging them according to a certain plan, then the accounts in the attendant on how to manage the disease as well. So all sick infants up to two months as we address the bacterial infection, jaundice and major symptoms of diarrhea. All sick children under five years of age must be examined for indications to indicate immediate death will or hospitalization. I mean, CI includes both preventive and curative elements that are implemented by family facilities as well as by health facilities. The preventive components include breastfeeding, nutritional counseling, vitamin A to reduce measles, measles complications. The pneumonia is the most common cause of diet associated with measles. Then it also includes iron supplementation. Immunization status that the child is getting proper vaccination at proper time as well. Then, treatment of common domestic infection by providing as windows and parental pangolin. In the curative and common and acute common diseases, which are diarrhea, acute respiratory tract infections, then pneumonia, fever, malnutrition, measles. So, this is the case management process. These are the six steps. And first of all, we assess. The disease is classified according to the IMNCI chart, and we identify the treatment, then treat the disease, then counsel, and then follow. So, there are two types of IMNCI charts available one is for less than two months, the second is for two months to five years of age. So, there are three types of color codings for according to the severity of the disease. The pink indicates urgent hospital referral, the yellow in indicates initiation of treatment at OPD, and the green in which the child can be managed at home and does not require any hospitalization or admission. So the cause of child death includes a number of reasons. The most common of which are respiratory tract infection, digestive diseases, malaria, and other causes as well. Then first of all, when the child presents, we assess for general danger signs. We we check that if this is a need first visit or this is the first day of the follow up visit. For danger science, there are certain questions that we ask and we certain uh, we assess certain symptoms and signs. For example, first of all, we ask the uh, attendant, which is most commonly the mother, that is the child able to drink or breastfeed. The second question we ask is, does the child vomit everything? And then if the mother says yes, then we ask the mother to, if the child is breastfeeding, we ask the mother to uh, uh, to, to, do, to do breastfeeding, and then uh, confirm it if the child is vomited or not. And if the child has, uh, is above two years and uh, mother reports that the child is vomiting, then we ask the mother to, uh, to give the child a glass of water and we check that if the child really vomiting. So we confirm the finding. Then we ask for if the child has had any convulsions. So these are danger signs. And we look if the child is lethargic or unconscious, if the child is having fits. So this is urgent. This, all of these questions and uh, signs that we see, they require urgent attention. And if any of this is seen, then the child requires urgent referral. So any general danger sign indicates very severe disease. And if the child is convulsing, then we give diazepam, which is an anti-convulsant. And we quickly complete the assessment and give any preparatory treatment. For example, we prevent low blood sugar because hypo hypoglycemia exacerbates the condition. And we keep the child warm to prevent from 
uh, metabolic acidosis and other subsequent conditions. Can we refer to this way? So these are the things just that you are discussing. So first of all, you would like to discuss if the child is present with uh, breathing difficulties or respiratory issues. So we count the breaths in one minute and we look for chest and drawing. So there is a uh, chart. Uh, we can see that there's a parameter for classification of fast breathing that in two months to five, 12 months, there is 50 breaths or more or 12 months to five years, there are 40 breaths or more classified as fast breathing. So we count the breaths in one minute, then we look for chest and drawing. And then we look and listen for stridor. Stridor is uh, a high pitch sound which is produced due to upper airway level obstruction. And then we look and listen for breathing. This is most. This is a whistling sound which is commonly seen during expiration and inspiration. So this this indicates that there is obstruction at the level of bronchioles, and the strider indicates that there is obstruction at the level of upper airway. So strider is an extremely dangerous sign. Uh, and if the child uh, has pulse breathing under the uh, if, if comparison of the parameter given. So, a uh, rapid acting sh sh short, sh rapid acting or short acting bronchodilator is provided. And then, the, uh, for up to 15 to 20 minutes, the children can reason is assessed. If the breathing comes down and becomes normal, then it is not classified as self breathing. And so, up to three times, the bronchodilator is provided. And if after providing three times, uh, with a difference of 15 to 20 minutes, the breathing is not coming down, it is classified as self breathing. So any general danger sign or stridulant can child into, uh, indicates that there is severe pneumonia or severe respiratory disease. First, those are appropriate antibiotic is provided and the child is immediately referred to hospital. Then in the second category, if there is chest in drawing or pause breathing, then it is classified as pneumonia, oral amoxicillin is provided for five days. And if there has been uh, concomitant breathing, then a short acting bronchodilator, which has been effective uh, during the OPD provision, uh, so that uh, bronchodilator is provided for five days with spacer. And if uh, there is a history of coughing for more than two weeks, then the child is referred for further TB or asthma assessment. Then we ask the mother to return immediately if the child condition is not improving or if there is any general nature sign developing. Then, uh, lastly, in the green category, if there are no signs of pneumonia or no signs of severe disease, then it is classified as simply cough or cold. And uh, if there has been sub, uh, concomitant breathing, then bronchodilator is provided for five days and fill the throat and relieve the cough with safe remedy. If there is coughing for more than two weeks, then the same TB or asthma assessment is necessary. Then the mother is counseled that when to return. So always a spacer is given uh, with the hospital later. This is the assessment that we do want to follow up. Then the diarrhea or dehydration. And if the child is presenting with diarrhea, first of the, uh, all, we ask the mother that for how long the diarrhea has been present and if there is a blood in the school. And then we assess the general health condition of the child. For example, if the child is lethargic or unconscious, is he restless or visible, we look for sunken eyes and offer the child food. And then we assess according to the uh, uh, color coding criteria given. And uh, based, on, uh, based on the parameters given, which includes looking for sunken eyes, offering the child food and the reaction of the child to it, then pinching the skin of the abdomen. And if it is going back very slowly or if it is going back slowly, very slowly means longer than two seconds. This is the chart. The pink indicates severe dehydration and the following signs are seen. Two of the following signs are uh, at least there. The child is lethargic or unconscious. The child is sunken eye. The child is not able to drink too early because he or she is so much uh, so uh, dehydrated and so lethargic that uh, if you offer water, she, he or she will not respond. 
and the skin pinch will go back very slowly, more than two seconds. So if the child is not a severe classification, there is a treatment plan, plan C, and uh, in which uh, uh, intravenous dextrose uh, solution is provided. And if the intravenous dextrose is not available, then nasogastric tube is inserted for provision of fluids. And the child is immediately referred. And if the child is two years or older, there is cholera, then antibiotic for cholera is given. And if the child has some dehydration, which includes two of the following signs, the child is irritable, restless, sunken eyes, drinks eagerly when offered fluid, and the skin pinch goes back slowly, then give food, zinc supplements, and food or dehydration are provided. ORS is provided at the OPD, and the child is reassessed for four hours. And if the condition improves, then ORS is provided. And if there is no dehydration, because there are no enough signs, so the child is uh, discharged and mother is provided ORS packets. So the two ORS packets that can be given at home. Then regarding persistent diarrhea, for more, the, there is diarrhea for more than 14 days and there are more than three episodes of uh, watery fluids and this classified as severe diarrhea. So dehydration is treated before referral. And if there is no dehydration present and there is persistent diarrhea, then the mother is counseling for feeding the child. And uh, the mother is uh, told to follow up in five days. And if there is a blood in the school, then the pro is given for three days. So these are the three plans, plan A, plan B, plan C. Plan A, as, as I told you, the mother is told to give extra fluids to the mother and she can be provided up to two packets of ORS. In plan B, uh, ORS is provided for some dehydration in plan C, intravenous treatment is started. So this is the classification of uh, persistent diarrhea and follow up. Then fever. Fever can be due to a number of reasons. If a child presents with fever, uh, the questions include uh, the, about the duration of the fever and has the fever been present every day, has the child had measles, and look, then there is a suspect for stiff neck, runny nose, bacterial causes of fever, signs of measles, and malaria test is conducted if there is a high risk area. And then for measles, we look for mouth ulcers and the severity of those ulcers and look for the pulse draining from the eye. These are all the complications of measles. So if the child is uh, experiencing high fever and stiff neck, then Immediately, anti-malarial is given, and it is uh, treated as provisionally malaria. And the anti-malarial includes artesunate and quinin, and first dose of appropriate antibiotic is also given. And for prevention of hypoglycemia, uh, dextrose is also provided. And paracetamol is given for fever management. Then, if the malaria test is positive and if the child has malaria, so recommended first time oral anti-malarial is given as well as paracetamol and appropriate antibiotic, and the mother advised to return of all three days. And if the malarial test is negative and there is no risk of malaria, then the symptomatic management is done with increased provision of paracetamol and appropriate antibiotic. And the follow-up is recommended in three days if the fever persists. Then about the measles. Uh, in severe complicated measles, if there is any general danger sign, or clouding of cornea or deep or extensive muscles or vitamin is provided along with appropriate antibiotic. And if clouding of cornea or pulse draining from eye, tetracycline eye environment is given. And then the child is effort urgently. And the second, if the child has measles with eye or mouth complication and the pus has been draining from the eye, the vitamin A is provided. And if the pus is draining from eye, then tetracycline eye environment is provided. And the mouth ulcers are treated with gentian boilage. And the follow up is recommended in three days. Then in a simple measles uh, with no complications, vitamin A is given. Then in jaundice and newborn, we ask for the jaundice first appear and look and feel. Look for jaundice, look at the young infant palm to full on the yellow. Classify the jaundice. So there are two types of jaundice, physiological jaundice and pathological jaundice. Physiological jaundice happens after 24 hours. Pathological jaundice happens within the 24 hours due to the blood in which the blood groups are different, which results in 
maternal antibodies mounting a severe attack against the child RPG which results in severe anemia and jaundice. So if the jaundice uh, it happens in the first 24 hours, it is classified as severe and the child is immediately referred and the mother is taught to keep the child warm. And if the jaundice is appearing after 24 hours and it is not very severe, so the mother is advised to give home care for the young infant. And the mother is advised to return immediately if the palms or soles appear yellow. And if the young infant is older than three weeks, then he or she is referred to hospital for assessment. Then follow-up is done after two days. And if there is no jaundice, then advice, mother is advised to continue giving home care. Then there is, this is the immunization status that we do uh, according to the age group. And you can see in this, the six weeks uh, at birth, BCG is provided for pre prevention of TB. First, oral polio vaccine is provided, hepatitis B is provided. Then at six weeks, these are different vaccines. Then at 10 weeks, then at 14 weeks, nine months, and 15 months. Then in addition, vitamin A is also provided every six months from the age of six months. And the routine anti anti uh, uh, treatment is also given. Then about those diseases, the mother is told to return immediately if the child develops danger of signs and uh, the mother is advised to return immediately. Then so there are certain factors that contribute to illness, which includes poor living conditions, lack of safe water supply, poor housing, overcrowding, home-based treatment, treatment from traditional doctors, delaying selecting forward health facility in treatment, inability of parents to recognize danger signs. Then about IMNCI, it is an evidence-based approach to case management, including appropriate use of drugs and diagnostic tools, used to determine health problems, severity of child, actions that can be taken for better care of child, therefore the child immediately manage the will resources or manage at home. Then it is a standardized case management of sick newborn and children, focus on most common causes of mortality, nutrition assessment and counseling is done for all sick infants and children, home care for newborns to promote and mothers counsel for exclusive breastfeeding and to prevent hypothermia and improve illness recognition and timely care seeking. So 